Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit number 3, lesson 7, practice problems. Our first problem here says create a graph that shows three linear relationships with different y-intercepts using the following slopes and write an equation for each line. So the first one has to have a slope of 1 over 5. I'll start it right here. Slope of 1 fifth means we go up 1 over 5, up 1 over 5, up 1 over 5. Beautiful line. Write the equation y equals 1 fifth x plus our y-intercept, which is 1. Next one we have is 3 fifths. I'll start it here. Up 3 over 5, up 3 over 5, up 3 over 5. y equals our slope, x plus our y-intercept, which is 3. One more of these. Next one it says 6 fifths. I'll start it here. Rise of 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, run of 5. y equals 6 fifths x plus, what's our y-intercept? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, your answer didn't have to match these exactly. You could have started them in different places, but changing the starting location should only change the y-intercept of those equations. Okay, the graph here shows the height in inches h of a bamboo plant t months after it has been planted. Write an equation that describes the relationship between h and t. The height is equal to, ooh, well, we need a slope. How do we find the slope? We've got to find some good points. Those both look like good points. Slope is rise over run. That looks like 3 over 5, right? You yelling at me yet? This is not 3. We have to make sure to check our scale. We went from 15 to 30. That's not 3. That is 15. So our slope, which is rise over run, is 15 over 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Slope of 3 plus our y-intercept. What's our y-intercept? Well, it's between 10 and 15. That means it has to be 12 and a half, right? Well, let's figure out what it actually is. We know our slope is 3, and we know here at 1, we have a height of... 15. So if we go back one, we have to go down three. So if we were at 15, we go down three, we're at 12. So that's our equation. You also could have written it as y equals 3x plus 12. After how many months will the bamboo plant be 66 inches tall? Okay, 66 inches tall, but this graph doesn't go up that high. Who designed this stupid thing? Well, we could try and extend this and figure out exactly where it is, but let's just use our equation to figure that out. Move this up a little bit so we've got more space to work. After how many months will it be 66 inches tall? That's a height, which means that's a y value. So we want to just substitute that in. 
equals 3x plus 12. Okay, now we have an equation. We just have to solve for x. Isolate the x. Get that x all by itself. How do we do that? Well, we got to get rid of anything that's hanging out on the same side of the equal sign. This 12 over here we don't want. How do we get rid of adding 12? We just subtract 12. Do it to one side, do it to the other side. 66 subtract 12 is 54 equals 3x, because we didn't do anything to the 3x. Plus 12 minus 12, those canceled each other out. So we're just left with 54 equals 3x. Now what's stopping the x from being by itself? We got to get rid of that 3. How do we get rid of a 3? Well, that 3 is being multiplied. To undo multiplication, we divide. 3 divided by 3 cancelled. We're left with x equals whatever 54 divided by 3 is. That is 18, I believe. So x is 18. How many months will it be? 18 months. Now, because I like to know if my answer makes sense, I'm going to look at this graph over here. 15... 16, 17, 18 would be here-ish. And we're looking for 66. Each one of those is 5, so that's 55, 60, 66. Yeah, that answer makes sense. Oakley Dokley, what is next? Here are recipes for two different banana cakes. Information for the first recipe is shown in the table. We got sugar and flour. Relationship between cups of flour y and cups of sugar x in the second recipe is y equals 7 over 4x. Now, for the other one, it looks to me like our slope, our rate of change, Half a cup uses three quarters. Three cups uses four and a half. That looks like it's half a time or one and a half times bigger. So this one would be y equals three over two or one and a half x. If you use four cups of sugar, how much flour does each recipe use? Cups of sugars are x for this first one. If y equals 3 over 2 times our cups of sugar, 3 over 2 times 4, 1 and a half times 4 is 6. That one uses 6 cups. Now our other one is y equals 7 over 4 times four cups. Y equals seven times four is 28 over four. Which is 28 divided by four is seven cups. What's the constant of proportionality for each one and what does it mean? Constant of proportionality, slope, 3 over 2 for the first one, 7 over 4 for the second one. And it means we use 7 over 4 cups of flour per... Seven over four cups of flour per cup of sugar. Same thing for this one. We use one and a half, three over two cups of flour per cup of sugar. Show that the two figures are similar by identifying a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections, dilation that takes the large one to the small one. So we want to take the big one to the little one. The first thing I'm going to do is 
reflect it. If I reflect it over that line, it's going to look like that because somebody did a mediocre job with it. Nope. I had the wrong one going straight. It's going to look like that. Reflect it over the vertical line through point G. Vertical line going through point G reflected over that line. We get this nice little new red one I drew. Now E's already at A, so now all I have to do is dilate it. From point A, which is here, and what's the scale factor going to be? Well, I look quickly, and that's two units, and that's one unit. We need a scale factor of one half. So reflect it, then dilate it. Make sure your points are correct. Line of reflection is correct. That puts the large one onto the smaller one. Therefore, they have to be similar to each other. That's my last question. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.